Canadien de football, M. Marc Cohen. Montreal, you're the visiting club. Who's calling the coin? Okay. You're going to call the coin? Okay. That's a head. Yep. That is a tail. That's it. Your call is? Tails. Tails? Your Honor, would you flip okay. the coin, please? Tails is the call. Okay. It is a tail. You've won the toss. You can choose now or defer. You'll take the football. What side would you like to defend? Stay where you are. Montreal will receive to start the game. Good luck, gentlemen. Moments away from the opening kickoff. Let's head down to the sidelines and check in with Sarah Orleski. Coach, last year you played the Grey Cup on home field. This is technically a neutral site, but it looks anything but. How have you told your team to prepare for it? Well, we spent two days practicing in the noise. We got a veteran football team, and we're hoping we get started by silencing them early. Thanks so much for this. Let's head over to Farhan Lalji with Ken Miller. Thanks, Sarah. Coach, your team was admittedly a little too excited last week. With the crowd even bigger and the stakes even higher, what do you say to your young quarterback to manage his emotions? Well, I just, I said, be calm, be confident, do what you do, and have fun. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, the weather is perfect, and so is the matchup. The Alouettes bringing a franchise best 15 and 3 record. They dismantled the BC Lions in the Eastern Final 56 18, trying to snap a four game Grey Cup losing streak against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The Rough Riders, who won the West, hosted the defending Grey Cup champions and have brought an entire province with them. In this, their second Great Cup in three years. Montreal Alouettes, you heard Mark Tressman in the locker room talk about the collective vision. That vision began at the end of last season for this Montreal Alouette team. They are focused. You mentioned the franchise record 15 wins. They scored 600 points this year. And this year, a team record for points allowed. This is the best football team in the Canadian Football League in 2009. Saskatchewan Rough Riders, they talk about from their head coach that effort is their edge. They are the most resilient team in 2009, and they had to go through a very tough West Division to get here. How about the weather out West in the fall? We've had nothing but outstanding weather for the most part throughout the stretch drive to the Grey Cup, and we couldn't have ordered better weather for the big, biggest game of the year. Interesting to call the coin flip and to try and figure out the wind advantage in the second half of this game because, Glenn, it's already changed today. It was predominantly going from left to right on your screen for the most part today, but uh, in the last hour or so, it's changed completely around. By the looks of the coin toss, though, Chris, I thought that Anthony Calvillo, if he won the toss, was taking the ball. So Darian Durant will have to watch Anthony Calvillo, the 16-year veteran, in his seventh Great Cup start before he gets his first series. Well, as Dave Randorf mentioned, 78 years ago, the Montreal Wing Wheelers beat the Regina Rough Riders in the 1931 Grey Cup. But this, today, a Grey Cup original matchup the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Montreal Alouettes. This is Major Darcy Molstad, Deputy Commanding Officer of Fort Kent. From Cold Lake, Alberta, welcoming everyone in Canada and all Canadian Forces members serving abroad. You're watching the 97th Grey Cup live on TSN. Well, this is it. Luca Kanji has it on the tee. There's Brian Bratton, Larry Taylor deep. The 97th Great Cup on TSN is underway. 
The ball on the carpet and quickly swarmed downfield at the 26-yard line. Bratton on the football. Not much of a return. And there is Anthony Calvillo making a Grey Cup record tying seventh start and coming off a playoff record tying five touchdowns in the Eastern Final. A few nights ago, named the outstanding player in the Canadian Football League through for 4,639 yards in the regular season. And the most remarkable stat for Anthony Calvillo, 2009, 550 attempts, only six interceptions. First play of the goal. For Jamel Richardson as we set the Alouettes high-powered offense for you in the backfield he'll have Avon Coburn and Kerry Carter at fullback the receiving core 3,000 yard receivers with Jamel Richardson We've got Ben Cahoon, Kerry Watkins and Brian Bratton in the offensive line Brian Chu the veteran of 13 years Josh Burke and Jeff Parrott at tackle Scott Flory and Paul Lambert at guard Scored on their first five possessions last week against BC at second and ten. And there is the most reliable receiver, Ben Cahoon, but he'll be taken down short of the first down by Mike McCullough, the St. Francis Xavier product at linebacker. It's a good start for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Chris, because the Montreal Alouettes this season have been such quick starters. Their first two games of the regular season, they put up big drives for touchdowns. It's a good start for Saskatchewan. There's Damon Duval and the dangerous Jason Armstead is at his 30, awaiting the punt. Good kick by Duval. Backs Armstead up to the 20. First man misses, and so does the second. And Armstead's out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. 13 on the return after a 56-yard kick. And here comes the Western Division All-Star quarterback, Darian Durant. 4,348 yards passing for Darian Durant. And he will have one thing to try and calm his nerves. He will have this crowd behind him, without question. Complete out of the reach of Chris Getzlaff. Take a look at the Saskatchewan Rough Riders offensively. They will have Wes Cates in the backfield at tailback. Their five receiver pack features Andy Fantus at slot. They have Rod Bag and Jerron Walker on the outside. Chris Getzlaff and Adam Nicholson. There's the offensive line. Jeremy O'Day, Mark Parento, Joel Bell, Chris Best, and the veteran. Gene Makowski. Second and ten. Meeks releases six receivers. Pressure over the middle. Wide open. West Gates across midfield. And the initial first down of the game as Durant hits Gates over the middle. West Gates comes out of the backfield right here. He's going to come out go in motion and then go right down the middle vacated middle of the field from the Montreal defense as their safety Matthew Prue walks out a little bit of an opening in behind the linebackers and a big play early for Darian Durant should calm his nerves 26 yards for Wes Keats now the inside handoff that's Rob Bag with the football and Bag down inside the 40 the Queens product is tossed up by Chip Cox Take a look at the Alouettes on defense up front. John Bowman and Anwar Stewart are the rush ends. Karan Williams, Eric Wilson inside. Defensive tackles. In the linebacking core, one change. Ramon Guzman starts at middle linebacker. We will see Shea Emery, Diamond Ferry, and Chip Cox. The other linebackers, Matthew Poo at safety. Billy Parker and Gerald Brown at halfbacks. Davis Sanchez and Marcus Dell on the corner. Back-to-back -back first down. to 13-yard run for Rob Bag. And Aaron Durant throws that away under pressure. 
Darian Durant, if he was nervous and did have some pent-up nervous energy in his first start in the Great Cup, certainly isn't showing it. That's a good, solid pass down the middle to Wes Cates to get positive field position. And right now, his offense is in field goal range. Well, he admitted early last week he was hyper. Ken Miller said, I'm going to have to dial him down. And he did yesterday. Durant said, when you're the guy doing the thinking, you better not get overexcited. Second and ten. Durant Walker immediately taken down by Billy Parker, the fine rookie defensive halfback. Saskatchewan Rough Riders, though, all year, Chris, really relished the league of underdog. And it was a reflection of their quarterback. In fact, in talking to the coaching staff before this game about Darian Durant, they say, no, during the regular season, Durant would get himself in trouble at times like a young quarterback will. But we were really looking forward to that next series because he always bounced back. There's Luka Kanji, 77% good on the year. He'll attempt from 42 yards out. Did not kick a field goal in the two games against Montreal. Puts this one wide left. And Larry Taylor in the end zone gets a block and is going to bring it out. Taylor down the sidelines. And out of bounds across the 25. So we remain scoreless. First quarter at McMahon. Is brought to you in part by Wendy's Baconator, the official hamburger of the CFL. And by Rona, proud sponsor of the CFL. Rona, doing it right since 1939. So no first possession points here at jam-packed McMahon Stadium in Calgary. Looks a lot like Ryderville, doesn't it? Montreal takes over at their own 30. Avon Coburn tries the right side. Not much there. Three straight 100-yard rushing games for Coburn against this Saskatchewan defense. Up front, Stevie Baggs and John Chick come off the edge. Keith Sholigan and Marcus Adams in the middle, a defensive tackle. The linebacking core has Ray Williams in the middle. Sean Lucas, who led the team in tackles outside with Tad Cornegay. And in the secondary, James Patrick plays safety. It's Lance Frazier and the veteran Eddie Davis at halfback. Omar Morgan and Donovan Alexander on the corners. Morgan, a 10-year veteran, nine in Saskatchewan. But the one he missed was 2007. Second down. But a pass for Richardson. Is it intercepted? Lance Frazier with it. But the ruling really incomplete. And the play halted as Frazier, the leading interceptor for the Rough Riders this year, tried to sell that he had another. Saskatchewan Rough Riders go with pressure out of the gate, trying to force a quicker throw from Anthony Calvillo, and they get it. Sean Lucas, the linebacker, comes from the right side of the formation off the edge, as does Tad Cornegay. He forces a quick throw, and that ball just touches the turf. Lance Frazier in perfect position on Jamel Richardson. The Alouettes normally quick starting, so back-to-back -back two and outs. A big win for the Saskatchewan defense. Duval, a line drive. Returnable for Armstead. Up to the 45. Armstead, after a 47-yard kick. Let's head to the Riders' sidelines and Farhan Lalshi. Thanks, guys. I had a chance to talk to Ryan Getzlaff, who is Chris Getzlaff's little brother. He's watching right now in Anaheim, but he won't be able to watch long. In about 10 minutes, he'll take to the ice for warm-up as the Ducks play Phoenix, and it's killing him that he won't be able to watch most of this game. Chris went through a similar situation three years ago when Ryan was in the Stanley Cup final. Chris was in Hamilton taking part in training camp with the Ticats, and he barely was able to watch any of the games because of everything going on there. They did speak last night. Ryan's message to Chris was, don't let this moment pass without enjoying it. Well, Chris Getzlaff's been so impressive this year. There are the family members up in the stands. He bought 22 tickets for the game. Chris has been so good, we stopped making the mistake of calling him Ryan. What a big play he had in the Western Final on a perfectly executed screenplay where Chris Getzlaff found the end zone. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders beat the defending champion, Calgary Stampeders, to get a berth into this game. Good eight-yard run by Wes Cates. The block from Joel Bell. And Cates again on second and two. 
42-yard line. Wes Keats with only 67 yards in two games this year against Montreal. Off to a good start. Both those games in the regular season, Saskatchewan got behind in those games and really abandoned the running game to Wes Cates. He had just nine carries in the first one, and he had eight in the second game. And the guy we just talked about, Chris Getzlaff, gets a nice cut block off the edge on John Bowman to give Wes Cates a little bit of a seam. 15-yard run after eight on the previous carry for Cates. And Durant hit as he delivers the football up to the flat. That's Rob Bag for short yardage. And Darian Durant got hit as he delivered that pass to Rob Bag. I've been impressed so out of the gate to see Darian Durant calm, cool, and poised in that pocket. He knew he'd have pent up nervous energy. His first great cup start, a reflection of his head coach, who is certainly calm on that sideline. Darian Durant leading on some experience around him. Marcus Crandall, the winning quarterback in 2001, uh, coach with the Rough Riders. Second and eight. Gerald Brown close to a first down looks like he'll be a yard and a yard and a half short Gerald Brown stepped Gerald Brown stepped up on this tackle and is going to give a tough decision to Ken Miller here as Wes Cates on a draw play on second and long you know you have confidence in your running game when you're trying to run the football on second and long trying to su surprise the defense but that tackle there by Gerald Brown is going to make it a tough decision for Ken Miller here I think they're going to try for points kick the field goal but the offense has moved the football against a defense ranked number one in 21 of 25 categories. You're right, there's Luka Kanji who will recalibrate and try from 40 after missing from 42. And this time Luka puts it through. First points of the 97th Great Cup game go to the Saskatchewan Rub Riders. Three nothing Saskatchewan. Let's go to the Alouette sidelines and Sarah Orleski. Chris, among the many positives of Mark Tressman with these Alouettes is how he has re-energized the veterans. Last year, going into the Grey Cup, the three longest-serving Alouettes, the three C's, Ben Cahoon, Anthony Calvillo, and Brian Chu. There was talk that all three of them may, in fact, retire. Well, this year. There's no talk about it at all. They are all enjoying playing for Mark Tressman. He has really re-energized them. In fact, Brian Chu said that regardless of the outcome today, he's not thinking retirement anymore. Luis Sakota, the line drive that off the fingertips of Jermaine McElvain, one of the up men. And McElvain will take off for the big defensive end, brings it across the 40-yard line. It is a veteran group, no strangers to these cups, and guys like Brian Chu tried to improve their great cup record, which started with a loss here in 2000 at McMahon against BC. 211 starts, Chris, for Brian Chu in Canadian football, and he was the one guy that I thought was mm -hmm. probably going to retire, win or lose after this game, but as Sarah mentioned, with Mark Tressman really rejuvenating their careers, they want to continue to go. Slings that and Jamel Richardson, the former Rough Rider, can't bring it off his shoe tops. Guy who left Saskatchewan after four years just prior to Saskatchewan 2007 Grey Cup Championship. Passing game a little off at this point. It's going to be a challenge for those offensive linemen we just talked about in Brian Chu and Scott Flory. Outstanding linemen in 2009. Won that award a couple of nights ago. They have to figure out this different front from the Saskatchewan defense. They like to use a lot of movement up there. Now they are 0 for 3 out of the game. Looking at 2nd and 10. Complete with Coburn oh, oh. looking like he was open. So a sputtering start for the heavily favored Alouettes. Heavily favored, and all the talk about this number one offense that ranked first in passing yards per game, first in points per game at 33.3, and in their first two, three series, they are two and out. Duval High. Armstead brings it down at the 20, shakes a tackle with a spin, and Armstead's been 
dynamic so far. The 2009 Grey Cup is brought to you in part by Weiser's Canadian Whiskey. Welcome to the Society of Uncompromising Men. Welcome to the Weiserhood. What a beautiful night here in the foothills. We're at McMahon Stadium, the 97th Grey Cup. Saskatchewan football at their own 30-yard line. Gary Durant with a pass. And Andy Fantuz has his first catch, the top Canadian, in the 2007 Grey Cup game. Five catches for 89 yards for Fantuz. We saw Jason Claremont in the huddle and in that last play for Saskatchewan. He's played sparingly throughout the season at 317 yards receiving. Did not score a touchdown, but you know that his veteran present, presence, a guy who has been in that Grey Cup game, 1-0-6, is important for Saskatchewan. Go! Big Chris Sarka checks in on second and one as the fullback. And the Canuck truck has it. And a first down for number 33, the city councilor. Up to the 45-yard line, who says he's had a couple of meetings. He's the rookie city councilor. Doubled the amount of carries that he had in 2008, and a lot of them in these situations. That pad level nice and low, and he's not really hit until he gets in the linebacking court. Said he's already had one complaint, but the constituent said, don't worry about it until after the breakup game. Oh, Seven for Sarkin, a first down. And here's Durant throwing that away under pressure as Diamond Ferry, the linebacker, was blitzing on the play. One of the linebackers that has subbed in has been Shea Emery, the Canadian from... University of British Columbia, great season this year with 52 tackles. A bit of a sore knee from that Eastern final against the BC Lions. So Ramon Guzman started the game. We'll see both of them platooning in and out. Avery, or excuse me, Shea Emery has been very important on the special teams as well. He's been taken off of those. So second and 10 for the Rough Riders at their 45. Emery showing blitz, he does come. Durant running out of time, and he'll take off. And now throw down field, and it's back. The catch is made by Jason Claremont. Little pressure from the Montreal Alouettes and the block picked up right on the outside by Wes Cates to give Darian Durant a little bit of time in the pocket. Now he's going to extend the play with his legs and then find Claremont down the sideline. Takes a big hit from Chip Cox, but it's the block from Wes Cates that gets things started for Saskatchewan. <laughs> Another example, though, of the escapability of Darian Durant and how he can add Lynn Cates getting to the edge. Flags are flying it. Ramon Guzman takes Keats out of bounds. Holding Saskatchewan number 66. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's Chris Best, the left guard out of Waterloo. Let's go back first of all to that big play by Wes Cates, the tailback. If he doesn't get this block, there's no play down the sideline to Jason Claremont. Big block on Diamond Ferry, who was blitzing from the linebacking court. Claremont makes the catch down the field. Now that holding call pushes him back, but it's first down. Ferry was shaken up. He's gone to the bench. Guzman takes his spot. There's Claremont again, and he is upended by Davis Sanchez on the corner. And didn't he make a physical impact last week against BC? in the Eastern Final. A couple of interceptions on the season for Davis Sanchez, but I like the play of Darian Durant early in this game. Everyone wondered if he would be nervous, if the nerves would affect his play. He looks calm and collected and poised in the pocket. When moving this football team, you can see the numbers show that. Second and 13 after the holding penalty. Pressure, and Durant just gets that one out of out of his hands, his hand wire. Stewart turned up the heat, the top defender. 
in the Eastern Division this year. And they're going to confer here. Did Durant make it to the line of scrimmage? Yes. Is this going to be grounding? And now the flag does come out. Yeah, it was very close, and I didn't think that it did make it. it looked like it was about a yard short. Intentional grounding. Saskatchewan number four. The ball never crossed the line of scrimmage. It's third down. So that backs the Rough Riders up. Darian Durant has done this now three times in this game, and we're still in the first quarter where he has felt the pressure and thrown the football away. That one just a little short of the line of scrimmage, so an intentional grounding call. Louis Sakota, the punter, and the dangerous Larry Taylor. Seven kick returns for touchdowns this year. Three by the Montreal returner. And Sakota with a kick off the side of his foot that bounces out at the 25. Great Cup on TSM brought to you by Pepsi Max Zero Calories with Kick. And there's the Pepsi Max halftime show as we get set for Blue Rodeo. Jim Cuddy, the left handed quarterback for the North Toronto Norsemen. What's cool about that is that football fans across this country got a chance to pick the songs that Blue Rodeo will play at halftime. Anthony Calvillo trying to get this started and the ball is locked loose Keith Shelligan's got it and the big defensive tackles down inside the 10 as Marcus Adams knocked the ball loose Marcus Adams is not asked to make many tackles in a season you won't see him in the newspaper very often he just keeps plugging up that middle one of the most underrated defensive tackles in the game his partner Keith Shulligan picks up the loose ball Saskatchewan has all the momentum and remember they were the heavy hundred dogs coming into this one Keith Shulligan the product of Spruce Grove Alberta and the Rough Riders with a first down inside the Montreal 10 first and goal Tremendous route running from Andy Fantuz, number 83, who's going to be working on Chip Cox, who walks out from his linebacker position and watch him jab step with his right foot right there. That puts Chip Cox now at a disadvantage because he's on the outside shoulder. Andy Fantuz has inside position. Good hard throw just inside that upright. And Saskatchewan Rough Riders have their first major. Nice route running as Andy Fantuz pushes Chip Cox up the field. Will jab step to the outside and back in over the middle. This five games this year was plagued with hamstring problems almost all season long. Declared himself 100% a couple of weeks ago. And boy, has he become a dominant player again. A couple of catches by Jason Claremont. Andy Fantuz with a touchdown. The Canadian Air Force is at it again. Chatham, Ontario product. Just the third touchdown 
Leafs scored against Montreal in the first quarter all year. How about the Saskatchewan defense and how they have bottled up Anthony Calvillo in this first quarter. Kanchi kicks it short. And they're going to let this one go out. And that will give Montreal the football at the 45. You mentioned it off the top. Is this the kind of situation? Legal kickoff. Saskatchewan number 10. First down, Montreal in the 45. Is this the kind of situation where Ken Miller's team has forced Anthony Calvillo and company to say, here we go again? Yeah, well, you talked about the Great Cup record and their four straight losses. 03, 05, 06, and of course last year to Calgary. And with Saskatchewan jumping out in front, this confident Alouette team now has got to be wondering. Just over a minute left, first quarter, Calvillo without a completion. Antoine the Cooper. And they'll try and get something established on the ground. A first down carry up across midfield. Their initial first down, and John Chick the tackle. A good play calling by Mark Tressman to try and settle this offense down, and they do it by going to the running game. And Avon Coburn mentioned his 1,200 plus yards in the regular season. All Canadian, along with Joffrey Reynolds at the tailback spot. And there's Coburn trying to settle this offense down and gets his first first down. John Schick brings him down at the 50. Four more for Avon Coburn, who had one game of personal high 25 carries, 146 yards, and two touchdowns against Saskatchewan. 146 and 101. So both games over 100 yards rushing for Avon Coburn against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in those two games. And this is the one area for Saskatchewan that this year has been a bit of a challenge. They ranked seventh coming into this great cup championship through the regular season against the run. Second and six, final play, first quarter, barring a penalty. There's the first pass complete, and calhoun has got it down at the 32. On the final play of the opening quarter of the 97th great cup here at McMahon. First quarter stats are brought to you by Tim Hortons. Always fresh, always. Well, you'd have to say that uh, most of the experts have to be a little surprised now with just two first downs for the Montreal Alouettes in that first quarter. Almost unheard of in the regular season for them to get out to such a slow start. Their first three series of the game, two and out. Great front running team. In fact, it's the most points Montreal has allowed in the first quarter this year. And I know when the coin toss was won by Montreal, they wanted to get the football, you thought, well, here they go again, the quick start that they're known for. Trying to play catch up here. First and 10, Camila, second Huffman. There's Cahoon again. The possession receiver for the Alouettes has his third catch. Well, in order to get this offense going, they need a little bit of help from their offensive line, and Anthony Calvillo got it on that last play because he had lots of time to look at his first, second, and third read. That offensive line up front has got to start to slow down the pass rush from the Saskatchewan defense. You can see Calvillo had enough time to look at his second read, which was Ben Cahoon. A little stop and go right across the middle. Just two catches for 19 yards in the Eastern Final, so Ben Cahoon Deployed more by Calvillo today. Back inside. And Coburn. Short yardage. And Ray Williams and Coburn a little jostling after the play. Ben Cahoon has just set a great cup record. Is now the all-time leader in receiving. 42, 609 yards. A couple of touchdowns for Ben Cahoon in his great cup appearances. Six of them. And with 57 catches next year, he will have more pass receptions than any player in CFL history. If indeed he does choose to return. 
First and ten, Calvillo, the quarter round him. That's incomplete. Jamel Richardson, the former Rough Rider who had three touchdowns last week, has been a target three times so far today without any success for Calvillo. You know, and Anthony Calvillo in that first quarter had a little pressure on him. There's no question about that. But he also had, at times, time to throw the football like he did there and really just missed his target. And could it be that Darian Durant in his first start is more calm than Anthony Calvillo in his seventh great cup start? He looks a little nervous. Three-time league outstanding player, second and ten. Has to step up into the end zone and threw it away as he really took a hit. Ray Williams, the middle linebacker, unloaded on Anthony Calvillo. Calvillo just runs out of time as he starts to work to his right. Ray Williams is what's called secondary contain and makes a good decision not to lead with his helmet there. He jumps up and just uses his shoulder pads and therefore does not draw the penalty flag. So the league's leading scorer, Damon Duvall, comes on 242 points this year. Finished the season 18 for 18, missed one in the Eastern Final. Cahoon spots it, Duval splits it, and the Alouettes are on the board. Early second quarter. In 75 days, the world will come to Canada for the Vancouver 2010 Olympic Winter Games. CTV and TSN bring you live coverage beginning February 12th. Well, it's not mosaic, but it sure looks like it. Rough Rider fans enjoying this 10-3 lead as Duvall kicks it off at Armstead. Going east and now west, and he gets warm. Corey Hucklack, the Winnipeg native, leading the charge downfield. It's Jamie Barise, the quarterback coach, that a few more words for Darian Durant at 70% in the first quarter. As we go into the second quarter, he's looked very good and poised in the pocket. Called Kerry Joseph. A couple of days ago, he was number three behind Joseph in 2007. Kerry Joseph told him, don't make it a bigger game than it is. Robert with the ball there. Has to scramble. Has to throw it away. That's the fourth time now in this game that he has thrown the football away when things have broken down. And again, just want to illustrate his poise as he drops his football, the ball, ball on the turf, but he calmly reaches down. This is a great cup championship, and his first calmly reaches down, picks it up, stays composed, rolls out, and throws it away. Every step that he has gone in his football career, people have told him he's not good enough to play quarterback, and that included North Carolina, where he went to college. wrong every time. Second and ten. Over the middle. There's Chris gets high. Cut down at the 26, and he'll be short of the first down. Shea Emery, the Vancouver product with the tackle. Layered routes there. Chris Getzlaff, the underneath route that the Montreal Alouettes defensively are trying to just scratch back into this football game and they'll give Saskatchewan that one in that situation in second and long and just rally to the tackle forcing the Riders to punt the football. First two and out for Saskatchewan. Larry Taylor waits. Sakota than his first. Hold on. And Taylor drops it. And he breaks one tackle. And is dropped at the 34-yard line. Approaching the four-minute mark of the second quarter.
closed captioning of the CFL on TSN is brought to you by SportCheck. SportCheck, the power of sport. Back at McMahon Stadium, it's Alouette football. First down at their 34, down by a touchdown. And over the middle, Jamel Richardson has the catch and breaks out to midfield. Richardson, the most dangerous receiver in last year's Grey Cup game for the Alouettes. Last year, his first 1,000-yard receiving season. He backed it up with another one this year and really missed the first five games of the regular season. And one of the things that not many people talk about when it comes to Jamel Richardson is his ability to get yards after the catch. He can break a tackle as good as anyone in the CFL and does it there on any day. First receiver not named Cahoon with a catch for Montreal today. Into the flat, there's Coburn. And he's dragged down by the veteran, Eddie Davis. Time for the TSN chalkboard, brought to you by Olamel's microwavable chicken wings. Well, the one thing that Anthony Calvillo will do when he gets in trouble a little bit offensively is go to Ben Cahoon, and they will try and rub for Cahoon and get him open. Watkins comes down. He makes it look like he's going to pick on Eddie Davis and then go down the field. Morgan has to cover him, but Cahoon will slip underneath that rub if you're an offense or pick if you play defense. Second down. Hooper a little stutter step and then plunges ahead and should have the first down. So this Alouette offense appears to be gaining a little traction. Yes, they are. They go to the run game and then they go to Ben Cahoon, Mr. Reliable, and the guy that led the CFL and catches with 89, 37-year-old Ben Cahoon, who says he's coming back another year for sure. Probably a couple of years. We will evaluate, of course, like they do at the end of every season, but Ben Cahoon under Mark Tressman continues to flourish, and we've, it's well documented, the chemistry between he and Anthony Calville. He's not the biggest receiver in the Canadian Football League, and he's certainly not the fastest, but Ben Cahoon, when that ball is anywhere in his area code, will come up with it. There is a ton of fight in that dog. Big Eric Wilson will check in, and so will Adrian McPherson, the short yardage quarterback for Mark Tressman, on third and inches. As the big boys hook her down. And McPherson will plunge ahead for the first down behind Brian Chu and the top offensive lineman of the league, Scott Flory. This year, Ben Cahoon made one of the greatest catches in a long, long time in Canadian football, and it was against Saskatchewan, one-on-one -on, -one on Tad Cornegay, and he caught the ball, Cornegay's helmet, and somehow was able to hang on as they both hit the ground. An amazing catch by Ben Cahoon. Made the best I've seen in years and years. And he alone has made more than a few. Montreal's version of the zone read that Saskatchewan deploys and Calgary's made famous? Well, it is, but you have to establish Avon Coburn initially, which Calvillo is starting to do now, so they can go to play action and fake it, pull it on Coburn there, and then go again to Mr. Reliable over the middle and Ben Cahoon. He will just sit down in the zone, and he just tries to read where Saskatchewan is playing it, sees the flow, he goes against it, and sits in that hole. Injured linebacker for the Rough Riders, Sean Lucas, their leading tackler the past two years, is down. So Jarrell Freeman will have to check in for at least three plays. And while Lucas gets attention, will step out midway through the second quarter. Pepsi Max Great Cup Halftime Show featuring Blue Rodeo. Still ahead. So 
Lucas to the sidelines. Jarrell Freeman's in. First and ten, Montreal. Six play the drive. Flags fly, and this play stopped. And it looked like Richardson was ahead of the snap for Montreal. Mark Tressman will script. Procedure, Montreal, number 65. Five-yard penalty for Pete first down. Well, Lambert, the left guard, called there. He will script the first dozen plays of the game, but at this point now, Tressman has to be looking at some adjustments that he's making. One adjustment was to go to Avon Coburn a little bit more. The timing and the motion was off in that play. Again, uncharacteristic for the Montreal offense to have mistakes like that. So it's first and 15. Six receivers up. Calvillo finds a hole and he'll slide down inside the 30-yard line. We will see him take off on occasion. On Eastern, final, he rushed the ball three times, had 24 yards rushing in that game, so he had a good average. He will take off, and that's one of the skills from Anthony Calville not talked about. He is a pocket passer, a timing passer. Picks up and runs, picks up a good chunk there. Got nine, second and six. Rough Riders with some late subbing on defense here. Calvillo looks one way, checks down. It's very tight to the ball, the fumbles. Last minute to it, Chris McKenzie. Is this the second turnover of the first half? It is. McKenzie did have a foot in, and it's the second fumble recovery for Saskatchewan. And Ray Williams is going to put the hit on Kerry Carter along with Eddie Davis, the halfback and that ball touched before it gets out of bounds and not only touched by Chris McKenzie but he grabs it with that left foot still in the field of play so that is a turnover all you have to do in the Canadian Football League is be the last to touch it before it goes out of bounds but Chris McKenzie secures possession Rough Riders led the Canadian Football League in fumble recoveries with 25 on the year, but Montreal led the CFL in giveaway takeaway ratio. They don't cough it up much, but they've done it twice already in this great cup game. Back to Cates and nothing to it. Taken down immediately by the middle linebacker, Shea Emery. Play made, though, by the middle linebacker, Ray Williams. Remember, Sean Lucas was knocked out. Williams in the Linebacking core is going to flow to this football. Kerry Carter comes out of the backfield, and Anthony Calvillo has to check it down here. But the pursuit of Saskatchewan, who remember the message from Ken Miller, who says effort is our edge. Well, it's effort that causes that fumble. Second and nine. Grant gets it away. Claremont's got the catch in front of Billy Parker. And taken down at the 26. He gets swarmed short of the first down. The mindset now for Darian Durant really is just try and grab some field position back. They got a decent spot here, enough to get a measurement. I was going to say if they're close enough and inside a yard, does Ken Miller take a chance this deep in his own end? Had a full yard in the first quarter and opted for a field goal. This is a much different consideration inside his own 30. And a lot closer than I think it first looked. And the big boys come in. Yes, they do. Along with Stephen Giles. Here comes the short yardage team which has had some mixed success this year. In fact, Stephen Giles has fumbled a couple of times in short yardage. Including, Chris, the West Final against Calgary. You gotta have a short memory on that one now, because even though it's just a few inches, where they are in the field makes it that much more of a gamble. <laughs> A pretty good surge off the right side, and they're going to give him the first down up near the 30. Driven back, and 
Shea Emery in there to fill the hole, but Chris Sark has become a critical guy in short yardage in yeah. recent weeks. Yeah, how about the confidence this coaching staff has in the Canuck truck up in number 33 to be able to take that ball off the line of scrimmage, turn around from Stephen Giles and hand it to him, knowing that Chris Sark will get them that few inches they need. Up near the 35, four yards for Wes Cates. Talked to the coaching staff about Wes Cates and that he was just shy of a thousand yards on the season and felt that for Saskatchewan to be successful against what is maybe the best front four in Canadian football for Montreal, they're going to need to get Wes Cates involved. Ken Miller said, despite the fact he missed a thousand yards, he contributed in other Fighting ways. Left. The only starting tailback in the CFL that didn't hit 1,000. Second down, Durant. That delivers short of the target intended for Adam Nicholson incomplete. And now the punt team will have to come on. And the first throw from Darian Durant that he looked a little bit nervous. And, and when I say that, I looked at his feet as Darian Durant He's going to drop back in the pocket here. He does have an open receiver. Watch him hopping in the pocket. He never really settles himself. Hops up and down a couple of times. Short arms that one a little bit. And it's too low for Saskatchewan receiver to come up with. So Louis Sakoto replaced the injured Jamie Borum late in the regular season. Set to kick it. To Larry Taylor. Good move. Taylor backpedals to his 15. And McCullough downfield and Taylor brought down at the 24. That's a 59 yard kick for Louis Sakota. Well, tonight on TSN 2 NFL Sunday Night Football, the Pittsburgh Steelers head to the Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Live coverage available exclusively on TSN 2. Beginning at 8.15 Eastern, 5.15 Pacific. That's a big, big punt for Saskatchewan and Sakota. His average in the West Final was 43.1, and they want a little bit more out of him. Sean Lucas back in the game on defense. More good news for Saskatchewan because that big punt just flopped the field in Saskatchewan's favor. Jocelyn Fournette, part of the punt cover team for the Rough Riders shaken up on the play. He's going to be the first one down, and it's normally unblocked from the center spot, but he gets blocked this time, and it's Davis Sanchez, the corner, playing on that return team for Montreal. Big, big punt for Saskatchewan. Gets them out of their hole. We'll see if Anthony Calvillo can move it back and get the field position back. Net on his feet. Looks like he'll be okay. Ken Miller talked about his team being a field position team. They got off to a slow start last week. Seemed to be pinned in their own end for almost the entire first quarter of the Western Final. But once they got better field position, they took charge. Now they're trying to him in. Calvillo in the other. North in a hurry. First of all, Anthony Calvillo to get a little more protection help is going to go with tight end formations. He's going to move Kerry Carter up to the line of scrimmage. And with Carter up there now, he's going to get a little more protection. There's Carter, one of the tight ends. He's got two. That gives him a little bit more time and it allows him to just throw it underneath here to Jamel Richardson and then let Richardson do his thing. 20 yard gain for Jamel Richardson. Anthony Calvillo will step out at the Rough Rider bench. Close to four for AC. Avon Coburn, his running back who had released into the pass route, 
Gets a little bit of a chip block here on Omar Morgan, the corner, as Calvillo gets out of here. I thought there was going to be some kind of collision. Actually, it was Tad Cornegay here, the linebacker coming up. Coburn just gets a piece of him, because if he does it, boy, Cornegay is going to put a huge hit on Calvillo before he gets out of bounds. Second and six. One-man rush underneath, and that'll be short of the first down. To Avon Coburn and Mike McCullough there again. Mike McCullough will get a chance to play in the rotation. Watch how he shows the blitz up in the line of scrimmage here. He's going to show it like that and then drop back. Get right back in that pass coverage. And it forces Anthony Calvillo as he sees him drop to dump it underneath to Avon Coburn. And then good sure tackle by McCullough. Got five starts at middle linebacker when Ray Williams was hurt. And... Boy, did he play well in the breach. Valuable guy. Kingston, Ontario native. Third and about two yards to ball in, and it goes off the side of his foot. Up at the 32-yard line. Uncharacteristic for the all-star CFL punter. I don't think that bounced out either. That went out in the air, which would be a penalty. The Rough Riders will gladly take the football as they mark it up across the 30-yard line. That's just a 24-yard kick. Boy, in the Eastern Final, Damon Duval pounded the ball, 49-yard average. This one off the side of his foot, just a 25-yard punt. Now, when you consider Sakota's punt of 59 yards on the last Saskatchewan possession, that's a difference of about 35 yards of field position on the exchange. About a third of the field. So, big exchange on the two punts. Durant back to work, looking deep. Rob Bag, and he missed an open target as Rob Bag got in behind coverage. Rob Bag shut it down for some reason. I'm not sure if he thought that he was not the primary target or he felt that Darian Durant had either already unloaded the ball or was looking to the short side of the field. He kind of geared it down in his route as he went down the middle or he would have had a big, big play because that ball was catchable. Missed opportunity, and Darian Durant said as good as the Alouettes' defense is, there are some big plays up there. Second and ten, Durant rolls. Looks for Nicholson. Incomplete. Davis Sanchez is there. They have been so sure-handed as Adam Nicholson drops one. So that's... And, and this receiving core in Saskatchewan have really been the story down the stretch and in the playoffs... And those were two mistakes in the receiving core that's going to cost Saskatchewan to punt the football. The first by Rob Bagg, who kind of geared it down on that deep one. And now Adam Nicholson putting the ball on the ground on a very catchable throw from Darian Durant. Second two and out of the opening half for Saskatchewan. Sakota again. This one bounces out inside the 30, and there's no return. And Louis Sakota is having himself a good first half. 47 yard punt and no return. 225 left first half. Then we'll check in Dave Randorf, Jock Climbing, Matt Dunnigan, and the big man Chris Schultz will weigh in on what they've seen in the first half. Those guys coming off a great regular season and a good playoff. Yeah, so I've been searching for an Alouette jersey in this crowd, <laughs> and, and honestly, I've found one yeah, so there's, far. There might be a couple. <laughs> there's a few sprinkled in and out, but wow. Sea of Green is here, Ryder Nation in attendance in the biggest city in Saskatchewan, Calgary. There's that line to the side. Richardson bounced on first contact. Gets extra yardage up to the 35-yard line. Bounced off the first hit by Tad Cornegay. One thing that Anthony Calvillo, you talked about missed opportunities for Saskatchewan trying to go deep. Anthony Calvillo has really not had the time to go deep, and he's gone to this quick ride and decide or play action, as you mentioned, Chris. In the run game, little play action there out to Jamel Richardson, but it's all intermediate and underneath throws so far for Calvillo. 
Second and four. Richardson in motion. Underneath it goes, and Gary Watkins pulled down. Eddie Davis was step for step, and that'll be a two and out for Montreal's offense. Another situation where Calvillo is trying to look deep. I thought he looked to the short side of the field to Ben Cahoon, who was covered up well right here by Omar Morgan. Omar Morgan, the veteran who did not get a chance to play in the Grey Cup in 07. He was in Edmonton, well covered there. And so Calvillo has to look back down and again, underneath throw. as bad a kick as you'll ever see from David Duval. Oh boy, that's shocking. That's seven yards. The previous kick was 24. And it just hands instant momentum to the riders. And that you could see on the drop of the football, he almost missed the ball completely. And it's so important for these punters to get that drop correct so the foot hits the ball squarely, and he almost missed it completely. Another shank. 44.8 yard average in the regular season, 49.2 last week. Durant going to try and make him pay. Chris gets lapped the catch in front of Gerald Brown to the 38. Kicking game is the third of the game, and Mark Tressman, when asked this week about special teams, he emphasized, he said he preaches to his team that it's more than worth 33%. The field is so wide, the field is 10 yards longer, so much time is, expires on a, on a special team's play. He said it's that much more important, and he's had his punter have two crucial mistakes in this first half. Seven for Getzlaff, second and three. Empty backfield, six receiver set. Short drop, and that pass incomplete. And Andy Fantuz usually makes that catch. Pretty good coverage there, though, by Billy Parker, the halfback. And when Andy Fantuz had his touchdown in the first quarter, he was working on Chip Cox, the linebacker. Here he's going to work on the halfback, Billy Parker, who gets his hands around the waist and just distracts his fat tooth enough as he goes over the middle. Parker in his rookie season in the CFL. So because of that seven yard Duval punt, the Rough Riders want to get a field goal opportunity. Got a touchdown off one of the fumble recoveries in this first half. And now Kanji will set up From just inside the 45. Puts it through. Big kick and a 10 point Saskatchewan lead. And three points really handed to Saskatchewan by Damon Duvall. Well, that ignites the fans here. Obviously, pro rough, rough rider, as Andy Fantuz has grown accustomed to. Rider Nation is unbelievable, and uh, you know it, it just makes the whole experience so much, so much better. They follow us all around, like not only in the own pro in our own province, but in other provinces. That we always got a strong group of, of green in the stands, and uh, it, it, it just makes it so much easier when the even the home team's quarterback can't have total silence when they're trying to, um, you know, communicate and, and do their cadence. So uh, we, we have neutral sites and home sites. That's how we look at it. And I'm not sure if this is neutral site or home. <laughs> no, this is this is a home game. I mean, this is a home game. And I, I wasn't exaggerating when I said that I was looking for Montreal jerseys in the stands and really have only found a couple. But you could see Saskatchewan so far in this first half playing like they really had nothing to lose, playing like they were the underdogs, no problem. They're playing loose. Sakota on the line drive, kick, throws it past Larry Taylor. And Taylor was likely going to concede a single point here. Putting the knee down. There's a, another one for the Rough Riders off the toe of Louis Sakota. And now it's 14 to 3. 
You know, Larry Taylor has to give up the point there because he's so deep in his own end zone. Sakota with another big kick. The kicking game a factor in this game already. But I just question a little bit the decision to waste a little time there. He gave up about three, four, five seconds right. as he walked down. I mean, the Montreal Alouettes are behind, and this game slips away on you in a hurry. Especially when you're trailing in. Larry Taylor, very casual, and he kills about three, four seconds there. He should have got down and given Calvillo more time. An 85 yard signal. Calvillo flushed. Now heaves downfield and incomplete. Trying to hook up with Brian Bratton, who had a pair of touchdowns in last week's Eastern Final. Touched on Omar Morgan's play in the last series. There's Donovan Alexander in perfect position down the field on Brian Bratton as Alexander plays that wide side corner spot right here and he is in great coverage when Calvillo has wanted to go down the field and try and push it deep he has not been able to because of the coverage of the Saskatchewan secondary thought of an Alexander who grew up in Winnipeg is for Christmas asked for Winnipeg Blue Bomber season tickets now he's playing with the arch enemies second and ten Calvillo in trouble again. Now looks downfield and overthrows Richardson. Very tough first half for the veteran Anthony Calvillo. And the Rough Riders are going to get the football back one more time in this first half. You know, they talked about confidence, and I'm seeing by the reaction of Anthony Calvillo, he is showing a little frustration as he twice in a row now could not find his open receiver and on that last last play he had an open receiver in Ben Cahoon but the pressure up front this time by Saskatchewan flushed him to the opposite side of the field and Cahoon you can see his frustration starting to creep in fifth to an out and what does David Duval do now was complaining about the grip on the football that's better Armstead Cut down at the 45-yard line. Tackle made again by Corey Hucklack. Still not vintage Duval, only 38 on that kick, but better than 24 and 7. Interesting now with just a minute one left in the first half to see if Saskatchewan tries to be aggressive and push the ball to get some more points before the end of the half and try for that major. Or do they get conservative here and just be happy with the lead? I think in a game of this magnitude and how quickly it can slip away from you, you go ahead and get aggressive. Get the points when you can. What we've seen from this guy this year, Darian Durant, is fearlessness. They do get the Kinks, but Kinks kicks it outside. Gerald Brown up to meet him at the 50. And West Keats has yeah. four to five. A tremendous vision there from West Keats. He starts out and look how he's looking like he's trying to look to his right and show that he may be picking up someone in pass protection. Then he takes the ball. Nice vision to bounce back all the way to the back side of the play as he sees it clogged up to the play side. So he goes back to the right. 142, 142, Second and six. Durant steps up and throws complete. That's a first down, and Andy Fantuz moves the chains. Now Darian Durant slides out to the right of this pocket, and then he just shows his poise as he uses his legs. He's a great ability to run. He had an 8.4 yard average, but I love whenever he scrambles or runs out of the pocket, he runs with his eyes up looking for that open receiver, and he found one. Rough Riders do have a timeout. 30 seconds remaining, first half. Durant to throw, and that was his complete. There's Durant Walker, and they'll mark him at the 41, so Ken Miller's got his team close to field goal range. And second and short. They want to keep it going to try and take a shot at the end zone if they can pick up about 10 here to get a couple of plays more. Second and a pair. And it's a quarterback draw to first down. Brought down at the 31-yard line. Now they're in field goal range and will likely use their timeout. Well, in field goal range and with 13 seconds may have a chance for one play 
to the end zone. Quarterback draw called good block at the point of attack. It was Wes Cates again on Diamond Ferry to cut his legs out. Saving the timeout. They go no huddle, and they'll take a shot. Durant rolling, looking for Fantini. He's got it. At the corner that Mark Eman. Marking him out at the two. But do they have time? The clock says 0-0. I thought he went out with about one second left. And are they ruling him out? They may have to go to the command center. Yeah. Actually, they're ruling no catch at all. They said his foot was out. Fantuz just saw the replay up on the screen. And he argued the point. He's got a foot. Well, he got that foot down first, didn't he? Yeah, his right foot. Catch made there, right foot right down. Right foot was down. You only need one foot down in the Canadian Football League, and it looked like he had possession of the ball and his right foot on the ground. The other question here is what was on the clock? Such a quick stutter step, but that right foot is clearly down before the left is on the white paint. So the challenge flag is out. That's one issue. The other is... Did all this happen with any time left on the clock? When Fantuz put his foot on the white stripe, that second foot, I looked at the clock at that moment, and there was two seconds left then. It went down to one. But that's going to be, there's two questions here. They're challenging whether or not that was a catch. It looks like it was. Saskatchewan is challenging and ruling on the field. I believe it was a catch. So that's the challenge because they did mark the spot. So the initial mark was catch, but when they conferred the officials, they ruled it no catch. So the ruling right now on the field is no catch by Fantuz. They are challenging that ruling. But the other thing in question they have to look at is was, was there time on the clock when that play was finally blown dead? Well, there's a look at the command center in Toronto. Jake Ireland on the right with all the high-tech gear. That's Jake Ireland right there. We'll take a look at this replay. You can see the clock in the corner. Three seconds, two. And so clearly there would be time on the clock. So there's the two seconds to your right, and there's the foot on the white stripe, which would stop the play. So this should be first down with a yard and a half to go and another now, interesting call. Yes. If it goes Saskatchewan's way, if it goes the way it should, does Ken Miller go for a touchdown with one second to go, or do they just take three more points at a 17-3 lead to the locker room? Well, the ruling as to whether or not it was a catch is important for Luka Kanji in the first place, because even if they go for a field goal down here, it's a chip shot for him rather than a longer one. So take a look. This is a better look at the clock. Right foot down. You can see two seconds and the left foot on the white straight. So clearly two seconds, and here comes Glenn Johnson with the verdict. After review, the player did catch the ball inbounds. And there are two seconds on the play call, on the game call. Two seconds. And that's why you have video replay, especially in a game of this magnitude. Now, Ken Miller wants a timeout, and what does he do here? In two seconds, he will not get another chance. So it's one play before the end of the half. Conventional thinking would say take the points. But it should it would be tempting. Now he's not on the one, he's on the two. Timeout, Saskatchewan. Field goal unit has come on. Armchair yeah. quarterbacks across Canada. What do you think? Well, this will give them a two touchdown lead 
if indeed Kanji is successful. And no matter how this game turns out, this will be one of those plays that is and decisions that is talked about forever because this is one of those decisions, and I like the decision by Ken Miller. In a game where your defense is playing as well as Saskatchewan's is right now, and a lead, take the points. So from nine yards out, Kanji puts it through, and it is a two-touchdown lead. After 30 minutes, what a brilliant performance by the Saskatchewan Rough Rider defense, and I think a somewhat shocking effort by a, an experienced Montreal Alouette team that was heavily favored. Darian Durant, in his first start, did not show nerves. Let's check in with Farhad Lalji and the Saskatchewan head coach, Ken Miller. Coach, you almost ran out of time there. Just talk about the momentum that last play gives you going into the second half. Well, I think it'll give us some momentum. We've been sporadic, and then we, we need that. We need to be, have some consistency, and this is a long halftime. So we, we, we've got to start with a bang when we come out. Thanks, Coach. Let's send it to the other sidelines and Sarah Orleski. Coach, this is a position that this group isn't used to being in this year. What's the biggest adjustment to make going into the second half? Well, we just got to regain our composure. We're very lucky to only be 14 down right now. Saskatchewan's playing very well. Our defense has been on the field too long because our offense hasn't had many drives, and we've turned the ball over twice. So we feel very fortunate right now to be only down by 14. We've got a long way to go. We've got to gain our composure and just got to play the second half one play at a time. Thank you. You bet, Sarah. 17-3 at the half at McMahon, the Pepsi Max Great Cup halftime show featuring Blue Rodeo coming up next. Saskatchewan Rough Riders make the Montreal Alouettes think at any time in this game, here we go again. And you have to wonder if that's exactly the seed they planted. Mark Trestman's team scored just one point in the second half against Calgary in the Great Cup, and now 60 minutes of football, four points. Ken Miller decided on a field goal, which was a good decision. Jason Armstead on the return. Remember a week ago? 75 yards to set up an early second half touchdown for Darian Durant and company. Stopped after a 31-yard return. Darian Durant looked real good in that first half. 13 of 21, 156 yards in his first Grey Cup start against Anthony Calvillo, and he outdueled Calvillo in the first half. Showed great composure, rushed the ball well, Scrambled with his eyes up. Six different receivers catching passes. Under Ken Miller, Saskatchewan 15 and 1 over the last two years. When leading at the half, Wes Cates is met by Karan Williams, the all CFL defensive tackle. Talking to Ken Miller, talking to Jamie Parise, the quarterback coach, who told me that they were going to have to try and pull Darian Durant back from the edge and control his nerves. They knew he'd be nervous and have that nervous energy coming in. Boy, he did not show it. Tremendous first half with Darian Durant. Huge underdogs in this game. Nice touchdown throw to Andy Fantuz. Now, important drive here to try and continue to keep that momentum. Second and ten. Pressure off the edge, and Durant is dropped. Taken down by Chip Cox. Another all 
CFL defensive player for the Alouettes, who had 10 tackles and a quarterback sack last week in the Eastern Final. Chip Cox looks like he does this on his own. He's at the left of your screen, and he's going to come in when Wes Cates releases. He decides to let him release and then creep in. You'll see him in a second. There's number 11, and he just continues on as Durant tries to scramble up to his left. There's Louis Sakota. Louis Taylor charged up, backpedals, and takes it on a hop. And Sean Lucas wrestles him out on the sidelines, and they've done a good job of negating Larry Taylor so far. There's Anthony Calvillo's numbers in the first half. Again, fewer passing yards than Darian Durant. Five two and outs for the high powered. Montreal offense, an offense that averaged 33 points a game and threw for just shy of 300 yards per game. I think we're going to find out a lot about this football game of this series. And Ralph DeCober finds a crease. Ball popped loose at the end of that play. They're saying Coburn was down. Now, the one thing that you know at halftime, Scott Milanovic, the offensive coordinator, would have gone in and talked to his quarterback because at the end of that first half, Anthony Calvillo started to show some signs of frustration outwardly, something we have not seen all season long. I think Avon Coburn shake it up on that play. And he's gone to the sidelines. So Darren Dietrich is in at running back. Second down, Calvillo has a stroke to Brian Bratton. And a first down. Yesterday, Anthony Calvillo said one of the things he's taken the most pride in this year, he went into the season with a goal of not having a bad game, and he thought he avoided that through 18 regular season games, and obviously last week wasn't bad. But that was a bad first half for Anthony Calvillo. Yeah, and you have to give credit to the rider defense and, and the main reason for that. Relentless pressure up front forced Anthony Calvillo to check down and throw it short. He's not been able to push the field down, the ball down the field. Coburn back in. First down at the 48. Good protection. Coburn releases. Sean Lucas with the tackle as Coburn crosses midfield to the Saskatchewan 54. At time, Saskatchewan went with four-man pressure, dropped everybody else out, and Coburn right here is going to come out of the backfield, and he's the checkdown man. Again, this has been what Calvillo has been forced to do a lot of, that intermediate range, four to five yards, dump it under, and hope, like Jock Climbing said at halftime, that his receivers and running backs can pick up yak yards, yards after the catch. He's going to have to push the ball sooner or later. You'd say a guy like Anthony Calvillo's do 100 passes with a great couple and a touchdown. Here's Coburn again. And he brought down by the middle linebacker Ray Williams coming off his best game of the year last week. Ten tackles, three quarterback sacks in the Western Final. Well, Ray Williams hides in behind the tack or the defensive tackle in Marcus Adams and then slides. He's made some big hits in this game. He forced that fumble that was recovered by Chris McKenzie in the first half. What a West Final he had. You can't have a better game as a defender than ten tackles and three sacks. Alouettes do have a first down. Huge questions when they lost Maurice Lloyd to the Edmonton Eskimos, Saskatchewan. He's filled the void in a big way. Lots of time. Calvillo stretching it out. And Richardson's got it. Anthony Calvillo with a connection to Jamel Richardson. And a little traction for this Montreal offense. First of all, the offensive line digs their heels in. Watch the big boys up front. They're going to slide to their left here to give Anthony Calvillo time. I talked about Calvillo having to push the ball down the field deep. He can't do that if he doesn't have time to throw the ball. That time he does, and this time Jamel Richardson makes that big catch along the sideline. 21 yards for Richardson. Back in the hands of Coburn. Slashing off the left side. And close 
to give them the first down. They are getting in their rhythm. They are starting this offense from Montreal is starting to get in their rhythm, and it starts with the guys up front. That time, some blocking. Scott Milanovic, the offensive coordinator, comes out, and he shows great mix in the running game and the passing game. A little bit of Avon Coburn, and then that nice throw to Jamel Richardson. He checks the ready list on his wrist. He looks at first and ten from the Saskatchewan 20. Pulls it down and now drops it off. And that's Gary Carter, the fullback, who had a touchdown catch in the game in Saskatchewan, but a fumble in the first half. Kerry Carter hangs in to the left of your screen to help with protection. He's going to help on Stevie Bags and then release and run with Calvillo. Just picks him up with his peripheral vision to the left. Dumps that ball off. Better idea for Calvillo to let his fullback take the hit in the open field rather than number 13. As deep as Mark Tressman's offense has been in Saskatchewan territory all day, second and three. Some extra effort should have the first down. Hey, again, it's the balance. It's the balance from Scott Milanovic, who's now come out. Mark Tressman, you know they got together. Mark Tressman calls the passing plays in the offense. Milanovic calls the running plays. They're back on page now. They are going to get that great mix in there where they get Avon Cobra. Now the linebackers for the Riders are guessing. Are they going to run the football here? Are they going to throw the football? And it gives Anthony Calvillo more time in that pocket. First and goal, Alouettes at the Saskatchewan 8. Ninth play of the drive. End zone pass to Mark Richardson. Touchdown. Game one at McMahon. Yeah. All year long, defenses have talked about trying to contain this Montreal offense because they understood that you just cannot stop this Montreal offense. Not with a 16-year veteran, a quarterback, a future Hall of Famer. You knew it was a matter of time. They've got some traction now. Revive the extra point. And now it's a one touchdown lead for the Rough Riders. Jamel Richardson is working on Lance Frazier right here. Frazier gets caught. When you're down on the goal line and you got man-to-man, -man, you have got to look at your receiver. He gets caught looking at the quarterback, Anthony Calvillo. When you are a defensive back in man-to-man -man coverage and you get caught looking at the quarterback, you have the best ticket in the house for a touchdown for the opponent. Kickoff to Armstead from his 12. Uh, Armstead brought down short of the 30. Nine play touchdown drive for the Alouettes. Closed captioning of the CFL on TSN is brought to you by SportCheck. SportCheck, the power of sport. Nine play, 74 yard drive, took 535 off the clock and gets Montreal to within a converted touchdown of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the ball back in Darian Durant's hands. And a response do we get from Saskatchewan. Pressure on, looking downfield. And a strider too long intended for Chris Getzlaff. Out of the gate in the second half, a good drive for the Montreal Alouettes and a scoring drive that sees Anthony Calvillo go five for five in the passing game, but I like the balance in pass and run. Five passes in this series, four rushing plays, capped off by Jamel Richardson on Lance Frazier in the end zone. So Mark Tressman able to regroup his team at halftime. Second and ten, Saskatchewan. Grant Royals, pressure on, he gets outside, and that's a first down. That'll step up untouched at the 45. Last year when the 
Grey Cup championship game in the second half. The Calgary Stampeders, Henry Burris started running just like Darian Durant did there. He ended up being the leading rusher and the reason that Calgary took that championship against Montreal. Darian Durant starting to take the game in his hands a little bit. He needs a pushback response drive after the Calvillo touchdown drive. That's a good start and good run to the outside. Durant 10th in league rushing behind only Henry Burris of both quarterbacks. Ran for 16. Now hands it off. And King slips through. Cuts midfield. To the Montreal 51. Diamond Ferry the tackle. And that offensive line for Saskatchewan. Get the job done. Up at the point of attack. Montreal Alouettes. Diamond Ferry in the middle. He usually plays that strong side linebacker, and he's blocked up well by Mark Parenteau. Wes Cates, eight carries, 53 yards. 13 in the first down. Six receiver set. Downfield, run backs down. In front of Jordan Webb. It's a big game for the Rough Riders to the Montreal 30. Rob Bag has that great speed going down the seam, and he's going to bend it into the middle on Gerald Brown in his first great cup game and you see how he's got Gerald Brown guessing a little bit I talked to Brown yesterday about this Canadian receiving core and he said don't let anybody tell you they're slow that Rob Bag can fly I respect Rob Bag he just made a nice catch in front of him top Canadian for the Rough Riders this year now they set up in that power eye and break out Durant slings it down It's a big Montreal takeaway. TSN2 brings sports fans more games, more sports, and more choice, including exclusive coverage of the Raptors, the NBA, and the NHL. Don't miss these events. Contact your television provider or visit tsn2.ca. Billy Parker, an interception in the Eastern Final. The rookie comes up with a clutch pick here to snuff a Saskatchewan response after Montreal's touchdown here in the third quarter. Coburn up across the 10, a little breathing room. Keith Shulligan, the tackle. Let's go back to that interception by Billy Parker, who is in the trail position. I know what Darian Durant is thinking here. He thinks he has the middle open because there's no safety back there, but a ball that is thrown a little bit behind Rob Bag gives Billy Parker a chance at it, and he makes a tough catch. He does. We took a long look at that, as I'm sure they did in the spotter's booth for Saskatchewan. Catch was good. And now second and three. Big down. Calvillo pulls it. And he's going to be short. Looks like they're about a yard short. Marcus Adams to stop. And this is a tough decision for Mark Tressman, who would like to get a measurement to really know how much he needs. Now, all season long, Mark Tressman, in these situations inside of a yard, has had the confidence in his offense, his offensive line, and certainly Adrian McPherson, who's come in and has been maybe the best quarterback in the league in those short yardage situations. But you're inside your 20-yard line, just as a head coach, I have to take a big gulp. And yikes. Less than a yard. But enough to really make him think about it. And out comes Duval. And you wonder, even with Duval's lack of success tonight, whether that might have impacted on the decision, but clearly it didn't. I think what impacted on the decision in this game is the play of the Saskatchewan defense, but for one drive in this football game. Saskatchewan defense has played well, and that's why Montreal's punting right now. So it becomes the sixth to an out. And they're going to shoot and enjoy good field position. And his 50. Armstead crosses midfield. And is dropped at the 48-yard line. Kerry Carter, the tackle. 45-yard kick. McMahon, let's join Farhan Lalji on the Saskatchewan sideline. 
Chris, after last week's Western Final, the Riders gleefully took over the locker rooms of their rivals from Calgary. Eddie Davis and Wes Cates made the request. They wanted their old lockers because they were former Stampeders. They got it. Davis told me it looks just like it did when he played here. As for Damian Durant, he wanted Henry Burris's locker. Burris actually wanted him to have it. Durant says, you can't go wrong sitting in the same chair as a Grey Cup MVP. And Tad Cornegay with a little debate on the Twitter site with Nick Lewis took over Lewis's locker. Here's Jerry Durant, and again, Durant using his legs to soften up the Montreal defense. He uses his legs and he uses his running back as the decoy in West Cates, right in the middle of your screen. Little play action here. And speaking of taking Henry Burris's locker, is that not the Henry Burris to Joffrey Reynolds play as he comes out and around the corner? And when he does and sees that he has that corner, boy, he just takes off. No hesitation from Durant. Trying to bounce back after his first interception in 101 passes dating back to Halloween against Hamilton. That's been one of the great improvements we have seen from Durant during the course of this season. He'll toss inside, Cates, touchback! To the 25-yard line, Wes Cates has eight. And Matthew Brew comes up pushing. La Montreal safety. Getting some blocks from all different players on the football field. And Chris Getzlaff right here, the slot back, used to catching passes. Watch how he works down and cuts off the backside. So the pursuit from the backside can't get there in Jermaine McIlvain. So that gives Wes Cates a chance on the front side of the play to pick up good yards. The receivers have to block too. Offensive coordinator Paul Lapolis says Chris Getzlaff's got that tough hockey mentality. And that's one of the reasons he's such a good blocker. Second and short, and the Canuck truck straight ahead should have it. Paul Lapolis does such a nice job of game planning week in and week out. He uses motion before the snap very effectively, makes it very tough to play man-to-man -to -man defense against his football team, and he always has a little wrinkle. He's going to that sort of Calgary playbook with a little of that zone read type play. Fake it to your running back and have an athletic quarterback in Darian Durant take it to the outside, and he's getting his receivers involved in the blocking. Says we do a lot of things like Montreal, and he probably watches more Alouette video than any other team. That Saskatchewan plays, first down, Durant, quick hitter, and Davis Sanchez was in the neighborhood. Yeah, and Duran, Duran Walker, the intended target. Yeah, Duran Walker, Chris, had to come back and take a quick step back to try and disrupt that play, or Davis Sanchez is gone. He got a great jump on that wide side corner. It's the long throw, and the timing has got to be right, especially with the veteran out there of nine years. Durant, a little bit behind, and Sanchez, man, he almost took that to the house. Davis Sanchez, 0-3. As a player in the cup, he has won one cup, but was not suited up. They got there, hits the blitz, and they screen it to Cates. Back inside, and Wes Cates dropped. At the 15, he'll be a couple yards short. Anwar Stewart, big, big tackle there to hold him short and hold him to third down because that play looked like it had some real potential. So with just over one minute remaining, here in the third quarter at McMahon Stadium, Luka Kanji comes on. Trying to make it a two-score lead for Saskatchewan. This will be from 23 yards out. Kanji makes no mistake. Ten points, Saskatchewan lead. We've talked about how this Alouette's team has a real confidence about them. Anwar's, Anwar, Stewart, Anwar Stewart said th that as a longtime veteran, all of a sudden he said these Alouettes have that Alouette swagger back. Well, we certainly didn't see that at all in the first half. They got a temporary lift on that bench with Jamal Richardson, who swore to me that he was going to be a difference maker in some capacity in this game. When he scored that touchdown, they got the lift. Now the real challenge, though, will be down by 10. Can they overcome this adversity? 
position they have not been in very many times this year. That defense allowed an average of 18 points a game during the regular season. The Rough Riders with 20. In the final minute of the third quarter, Brian Bratton on the return. Tad Cornegy can't bring him down. But Bratton breaking tackle after tackle. And that'll be a jolt for the Montreal bench. You never know in a game like this who will be the player that ignites the football team. And it could just be Brian Bratton on this return. And not even because of the yards or the field position, but because of how he did it. All the second ever. Broke a tackle there, one. Broke a tackle there, number two. He keeps going down the sideline. That's number three. Number four. He broke four tackles to pick up some big yardage. And that's Jarrell Freeman, the leading tackler on special teams for the Rough Riders. Tad Cornegay on defense. Broke that tackle. That can inspire a football team right there, folks. 54 yard return. And now into the hands of Hooper. Shifting gears. Now wrapped at the 42. Best start for the Alouettes in this game. And Avon Coburn, a bigger part of this offense, told us the other day, I'm probably just going to be a decoy. <laughs> but I think that was a, a, a decoy effort by him. But the thing that they understand, Chris, is that in the two games these two teams played each other in the regular season, Coburn was over 100 in both. Barring a penalty, and it has been a relatively penalty-free game. This is the final play of the third quarter. Coburn again. And he has a first down at the Saskatchewan 36. Through 45 minutes of football. And the favorites are down by 10. Third quarter stats brought to you by Tim Hortons. Always fresh, always. You know, as a former defensive player, I always look at those first downs because first downs means that your offense is staying on the field. Montreal has caught up a little bit there. Both teams have got their running games involved. Avon Coburn for the Montreal Alouettes. But that Brian Bratton return may be the play that ignites this team. They had to be different in the second half, and they have been. Well, it is a 10-point lead, but uh, Montreal already in scoring position. You knew if they were going to come back, it would have to be established early, and that first drive in the second half for Montreal was big. Yeah, Anthony Calvillo goes 5-for-5 five five in that drive. They had the balance with Avon Coburn with four carries out of the nine plays in the drive, and you're right, they have a chance to make it a three-point game if they can finish this one. First and 10. Alouettes at the Saskatchewan 35, a long time, and nobody open. And down goes Calvillo, John Chick, and Stevie Beggs meet the quarterback. That's what you call a coverage sack, because downfield, the coverage is like a blanket. Anthony Calvillo cannot find anybody. Let's take a look at the short side of the field. Ben Cahoon on the crosser. He's covered up by Sean Lucas. Jamel Richardson can't open up. Over to the wide side, Kerry Watkins runs right into Lance Frazier. He's covered up. Donovan Alexander has S.J. Green down the sideline. That's a coverage sack. Second sack of the game. John Lucas is going to come off the edge here. He forces Anthony Calvillo to bounce. And when he does, that buys the linebackers in Mike McCullough and Ray Williams an extra second to get there. And they arrive at the quarterback at the exactly the same time. Mike McCullough, a situational defensive player on second down. But how many big plays has he made this season? And so they knocked them out of scoring range. And send the punt team on. And Duvall will look for the corner flag down. And David Duvall sends this one into the end zone. And Armstead will take a knee. 
And we'll wait and find out what this penalty flag's all about back at the line of scrimmage. Oh, well, they sort that out to give full credit to that Saskatchewan defense for pushing Montreal out of field goal range and forcing the punt. It is procedure against Montreal likely to be declined. Yeah, I would think so in that the ball went into the end zone and should give Saskatchewan some field position. Oh, I think they're going to take it. Procedure, Montreal, no end. That's a five-yard penalty for the feet third down. And maybe the decision here to take the penalty in that Damon Duvall has not had his best day kicking. But they do give Duvall another chance to pin the Rough Riders deep. That's just an interesting decision. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the you know, the conventional wisdom is you, you take, give up the point, and you take the field position. And again, you might give Armstead a chance to return one. This will go to the end zone, and we'll get the and same the result. And there is a, another flag down in the same spot. And is this an alignment penalty? It is. Looks like it's going against a procedure against Montreal. And now it looks like Saskatchewan may decline this penalty. And not roll the dice once more. Procedure, Montreal, no end. That penalty's declined. Saskatchewan's giving up a single point. First down, 35. So it is a single point, and it is a nine-point Saskatchewan lead. Well, the tradition continues this holiday season on TSN as Team Canada goes for a record six consecutive gold medal at the 2010 IIHF World Junior Championship. Gord Miller, Pierre McGuire, live coverage from Saskatchewan begins Boxing Day. Team Canada facing off against Latvia. single but they get the football at the 35 and Durant play action dipping it off here's Andy Van Toos one handing it up to the 45 and a first down good motion before the snap as we talked about something Paul LaPolice does well there's the play action and that zone read play again to freeze the linebackers in the halfback they get to the outside because of a crackback block from the wide receiver for Saskatchewan's Fantuz is wide open. Paul Apolis comparing Fantuz to Milt Stiegel and his ability to get open. Five catches, 67 yards, and now Cates, who's tuned it up today. Wes Cates having one of his most prominent games of the season for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Joel Bell and Mark Parenteau at the point of attack open up a nice wide hole on the very same looking play as they just ran to Andy Fantuz, but this time they're going to give the ball to Wes Cates up the middle and watch number 57, Mark Parenteau, the right guard, step into the hole and just roll right here. The linebacker and Diamond Ferry to the inside. That opens up a nice scene for Wes Cates. 17 yards, 79 on the day for Cates, who had only 67 combined in two starts. They pick the reverse and Walker gets the edge. Durant Walker. Oh, Paul LaPolice now pulling. Plays deep out of the playbook against this Montreal defense. They have motion going in both directions. I believe it was Rob Bag coming from the right of your screen in this direction and from the opposite side. Duran Walker comes and he's the guy who's going to get the ball. Awful confusing for the Montreal defense. There's the underneath handoff. They got Bag coming the other way just in case Walker wants to flip it to him on a double reverse. And that has the Montreal defense chasing. Yeah, the old fake double reverse. And it works for 18. Durant Walker's first run of the year. Back to Kate, straight ahead. And a 
potential touchdown saving tackle by Davis Sanchez. The Montreal Alouettes this year ranked number one against the run. And Wes Cates, who his coach said had a very good season despite not making it to that thousand yard mark, is now starting to become a huge factor in this football game and the blocking up front outstanding Chris Best and Gene Mikowski. There's the defensive coordinator Tim Burke of Montreal. His defense has allowed only one 100 yard rusher all year. That was Martel Mellon who made the most of it 200 yards plus. underneath on the fake they've shown this Cates play but this time they put in a variation and have Darian Durant follow Cates in now they're gonna get two blocks at the point of attack Mark Parenteau right there he seals the deal and watch Cates come up on the linebacker because Darian Durant needs one more and he gets it right there now it's all Durant and speed and determination that want to factor from number four to beat the last defender to the goal line Sakota drills it downfield. There's Baron Bratton looking for another big return. Up across the 35. Touchdown for Darian Durant. He has run four times, 57 yards, and a major. And four of the five plays on the drive were runs after the catch by Van Tuz. Couple of fakes to West Cates. That time they gave the ball to West Cates. That time they give the ball. Fake the double reverse to Duran Walker. Little West Cates up the middle. I mean, this is textbook X's and O's from offensive coordinator Paul Lapalus. What a drive for Darian Durant, and they needed the pushback. Well, you said he was in Henry Burris's locker. Shades of Burris from last year's cup. And now Calvillo's really got to make things happen. Coburn over the backfield. Cuts it back. And a big play down inside the Rough Rider 50-yard line. And now all of a sudden you see that sense of urgency from the Montreal Alouettes. They see this one slipping away. The heavy favorites coming into this football game. And they've watched the Saskatchewan defense really dictate the pace when they pushed them out of field goal range. And you can see the sense of urgency now. They know it's slipping away. They've got to get it done right now. 26 for Avon Coburn. He's been their most dangerous weapon. And he's got the ball again. Right side, slashing to the 40. Seven for Coburn, who last year was on pace for over 1,000 yards, rushing and receiving. Unprecedented in CFL history and stopped only by an ankle injury. The only issue now, Chris, when you're going to that running game and Avon Coburn from Montreal now is that the clock becomes your enemy. You start to run the ball, that takes more time off the play clock. Under nine to go. Second and two, two and a half. Coburn again, left side. And he'll have the first down. You think back to the turn of events here. Brian Bratton brings back that back return. And Gary Echeverry's defense responds. Anthony Calvillo had great field position. Echeverry's defense stops him. And not only stops him in that instance, takes away the momentum by pushing them out of field goal range. Damon Duvall has to punt. They give up a single. And all of a sudden, Darian Durant takes it down the other end and makes it a 27-11 game. This defense has come to play. Montreal first down. Intercepted. 
And Josh Bork mugged Stevie Banks, who thought he had a shot at an interception. He wanted to get some kind of interference call because you're right, Josh Burke, if not for tackling Stevie Banks off the edge right at the left of your screen. And it's Tad Cornegay that knocks this one up in the air, but watch the tackle, 59, pulling down number 90 from behind. This was an issue for Anthony Calvillo in the Great Cup a year ago with four knockdowns against the Calgary defense. Three by Mike Lepinjo, and the Alouettes will tell you that was the difference in last year's Great Cup game. Second and ten. One time over the middle. And the Alouettes have life. The safety, James Patrick, is going to get frozen here because Jamel Richardson comes on a crossing route underneath. That's going to pull up the safety, number 14. There's number 14 flash across. He's going to sit there on the crossers. Anthony Calvillo notices that, and he has Brian Grant going behind number 14, the safety on the post. Grant makes a nice catch over the middle. Brian Grant, the man. Anthony Calvillo says it's their most underrated offensive player. Big catch there, 33 yards, first and goal. Down at the three. Over. Touchdown! Avon Coburn into the end zone. Now it's a 10-point lead. And do the Alouettes go for two? Well, not only important that they cap this drive off, Chris, but important that they do it in one play. If the Saskatchewan defense makes Montreal bang it in there over a couple of plays, that takes more valuable time off the clock for Montreal. So not only to get the big play from Brian Bratton they needed, but they score in the very next one from Avon Coburn, and they'll go for two. In 2000, they came up short on a missed two-point convert late. On this end zone, trying to make this an eight-point game. Calvillo steps up, throws, and they got it. Kerry Carter with the catch, and they're within eight points. The Montreal Alouettes get right back in it. The 2009 Grey Cup on TSN is brought to you in part by Wendy's Baconator, the official hamburger of the CFL, and by Rona, proud sponsor of the CFL. Rona, doing it right since 1939. So the plot thickens here at McMahon with 6.46 left in the fourth quarter. Armstead from his five. Follows the wedge across the 30, then a huge jolt by Jermaine McIlvain. Well, the plot thickens because of one play, and that's Brian Bratton. I'm going to show you the safety, Patrick. On the crossing route here, it's actually going to be Ben Cahoon, and watch how Patrick is going to stop his feet and not backpedal. He's going to just slide with Cahoon on that crosser. Anthony Calvillo notices that, goes over the middle to Brian Bratton, who makes the big play. That's capped off by this touchdown from Avon Coburn, and then the two-point convert from Gary Carter. And we've got to finish. Rough Riders scored on their last possession, 191 yards rushing, but nothing there. Wes Cates brought down Anwar Stewart there. And what it's all about, the Great Cup through the stands here as the RCMP bring it down to field level. There's a lot of football to be played in this next six minutes. Is there ever? Starting with a critical second and ten call from Darian Durant. Four-man rush. Durant looks for Van Tudor's and it's intercepted. Gerald Brown as Van Tudor's and Durant weren't on the same page. The scramble rules for a receiver, if you have an intermediate or short route and the quarterback scrambles, you turn it up and go deep. If you're deep, you come back. Darian Durant is going to scramble to his right. When he does, he
He's looking at Fantus down the sideline, thought he was going to do the scramble rule and turn up. Andy Fantus is the inside receiver. Now he's on this. A scramble rule means this. Watch what he does. He comes out. Excuse me, that was Bags. Here comes Fantus from the inside, and he should turn up and doesn't. So the turnovers are even at two apiece, and Calvia back to work. Under pressure, dumps it off. Here's Coburn. Avon Coburn spinning across the 45 and down to the 41. That's a Montreal first down. 14 for Coburn. And it has been Coburn, the difference maker for Montreal, as they climb back in this. Running and receiving. Under five minutes remaining. Alouette's trying to erase an eight-point deficit. Back to Coburn. To the 37, Ray Williams gets up pushing. And it's not surprising because Avon Coburn, through the bottom part of the, of the regular season, the last few games, really didn't play all that much. In fact, in the month of October and into November, only had 39 carries. He was a little nicked, and Mark Tressman wanted to rest him for this situation right now. And has he been productive in this second half? Biggest part of the offense, 87 yards rushing. 58 receiving, 21 touches, 145 yards, second and five. Calvillo checks down, Coburn brought down by Mike McCullough. That should be a first down. See where they spot it. Boy, it hasn't been one of those games for Anthony Calvillo where you would say, this is the Anthony Calvillo, the future Hall of Famer we're used to seeing in upwards of 300 yards and all of that, but he is scratching his way back in this one and taking a little page out of the Saskatchewan book and the way they played all season coming from behind. Mentioned that missed two-point convert in 2000. They were down eight late. And came within that missed two, only to lose to BC. Can't find anybody again. And he'll throw that away with Ray Williams putting on the heat. Another big postseason game for Ray Williams. Anthony Calvillo, you talked about it earlier, Chris, and how he changed his training regime. He changed his diet. He came in in better shape. Felt like in the Great Cup last year in the fourth quarter, a couple of mistakes he made were because he started to fatigue. He showed some escapability there. Ticking down to the three-minute warning. I'm out. Montreal. And a second and ten that Anthony Calvillo and the Alouettes want to think about. And they use their timeout. Interesting that they would use their timeout when they were going to get the three-minute warning, but they get... And they're calling it now. Yeah, they are going to call the three-minute warning. And we'll step up an eight-point Saskatchewan lead. So we're down to the final three minutes. We're still trying to determine whether Montreal burned its timeout or whether Glenn Johnson just called the three-minute warning. Technically, he should not have... There was still over three minutes left. And the Alouettes broke the huddle. we get it confirmed for you. Right now, the issue is second and ten. Montreal. Fighting the noise. In the heat. Calvillo pulls it down. And he'll get drilled at the 25 short of the first down. The word we're getting from the sideline is that the Owls did burn their time out. And the reason Mark Tressman would do that is because if he doesn't burn his time out, it was before the three minutes, he would have had to have run the play before it got to the three minute warning, which would have meant that he would have lost some valuable seconds on the clock. So he burns his time out to save the play and some seconds on the clock. Third and three, the Alouettes are going for it. A field goal here would get 
get them within a converted touchdown of the lead. But they're going to stay on the field. A big third down gamble. Calvillo throws. Richardson got it. And they convert. And they're still alive. What composure by Calvillo to throw a strike. And Jamel Richardson in just his sixth year, but really just a few years of playing full time, is becoming an elite receiver in the Canadian Football League because that is a money catch on third down and possibly the game on the line. Are you surprised they gambled third and three with over two and a half minutes to go? A little. It worked. Inside, Richardson breaks a tackle, but into the traffic. And Eddie Davis hanging on. I, I am a little surprised, Chris, but when you think back to the 2008 Great Cup Championship against Calgary with about 2.30 left, the Stampeders took possession. It was a one-possession game. And the Montreal Alouettes and Mark Tresman and Anthony Calpio watched Calgary take that game and burn the clock down. They didn't want to do that again. They're going after this game. Second and seven. Another critical second and long. Calvillo steps up. Unload. Ben Cahoon. Touchdown. How did Anthony Calvillo know where the line of scrimmage was? He steps up in there. Mike McCullough shows and flashes in front of him, and somehow he had the presence of mind with the pressure on him trying to get back in this football game. He comes up the middle. Mike McCullough spying him. He steps up, and he knows he's not crossed the line of scrimmage yet. Dumps it off to Ben Cahoon, and he dives into the end zone. Third great cup touchdown of his career, first since 2003, and now the biggest play of the game is the Alouettes. Intended for Jamel Richardson and shades of 2000. They went after the youngster Donovan Alexander. Yes, they did, and he jammed up. And he jammed up. Jamel Richardson at the point of attack. Watch how Richardson tried to get inside position, and Donovan Alexander jams him. He, Jamel Richardson wanted a pass interference call. May have had a bit of an argument. The only reason I say that is that Alexander turns sideways. When you turn sideways, you cannot contact the receiver. If you're square to the line of scrimmage, you absolutely can. It doesn't matter now. Donovan Alexander got away with it down on the goal line. Calvillo wanted to throw the quick slant to the right. Richardson tries to get inside position. Alexander denies it. See, if you see that contact made with the ball in the air, that's why Richardson wanted the flag, and he got away with one. The former Alouette, you mentioned yesterday, I'm familiar with Anthony Calvillo. I, I know their receivers, and obviously they wanted to work on an old teammate. And Donovan Alexander's just made one of the biggest plays, and it may be one of the most talked about plays in this game. And you could tell by the look in his face, he got away with one there. Big kickoff, and Armstead has to flag it down back at his goal line. Did he get them any breathing room while he's out beyond the 15? And now the Montreal defense will be charged with going out and making a quick stop. Let me let me explain again. When when the defenders shoulder pads are square to the line of scrimmage like that he can make contact when the receiver attacks because he's not sure if he's run blocking or if he's going out in the road see now though when you hold it there the shoulder pads are not square they're on this angle and he grabs a little bit that's why donovan alexander got away with one there certainly not done darian durant needs a first down or two and he puts it in the hands of Wes Cates, and there's nothing there. Ball popped loose. Guzman up with it. I don't want to get too far ahead, but we may come to the point where Ken Miller has to make a decision. 
Do you kick away and give up good field position and a potential game-winning field goal? Or would you ever give up two for the tie? That's why this down right here is absolutely crucial. Second and nine. More heat on the Saskatchewan offense than they've had all day. Grant, drop bag. Got to get five yards, and he gets drilled. Chip Cox with a punishing hit. And Rob Bag's not getting up right away. Rob Bag came out of the backfield. He goes to the right out of that bunch formation. He gets the ball in the flat. Now he is held up there and hit hard by Chip Cox. And now you're right. Ken Miller has got to make a tough decision, but. I'd be surprised he doesn't kick this football away. What a hit. That bag remains down. I think you're right. They got maybe enough yards to not even consider the safety. They'll put it on the foot of Louis Sakota and hope he can continue his fine evening in this great cup. And we are in for quite a finish. 70 seconds on the clock. Brian Bratton has had a couple of good returns in this football game. Right now for the Alouettes, he's the lone man back. This gives both teams time to get ready, and you can see it looks like a shoulder issue or possibly collarbone for Raw Bag. Saskatchewan Rough Riders in this great cup championship without their number one receiver in Weston Dressler, who was injured mid-season. I believe it was Billy Parker, Chris, that held up Rob Bag. And when he held him up, Chip Cox had a free shot. Guy who made this team in 2007 and said, you know what, I'm going back to school. And he ended up watching the Great Cup game in 2007 as a guy who turned down the opportunity to be on the team and he said, I, I have no regrets. That extra year of university football made me a better player and obviously his night is done. And a guy who didn't join the team until late October, Louis Sakota, has a lot of pressure on his foot right now. Letting the clock run down as much as they can. One second left. They'll use their timeout. Timeout, Saskatchewan. So Anthony Calvillo will have about 40 seconds to work with to cap the comeback. And Anthony Calvillo has broken a Great Cup record for all-time TD passes in Great Cup. Nine for Calvillo. And he just needs field goal range. Depending on what Brian Bratton gets here, and where this punt ends up. His team trailed by 14 at the half. So Bratton and not Larry Taylor. As Mark Tresman opts for maybe more sure hands in this situation. Great kick. 41 to Brad it. And the Alouettes get on it, but they lose 10. Etienne Boulay saves the day for the Alouettes. Larry Taylor sometimes an adventure with his hands, so they put a receiver back there, and this isn't what Mark Tressman wanted. Well, first of all, the punt from Louis Sakota is huge. Tons of hang time. A 59-yarder. That puts the pressure on Larry T or Brian Bratton. Bratton juggles it around. The ball's on the ground. You're right. Etienne Boule gives Montreal a chance, but now it's on the Saskatchewan defense. So it all comes down to this possession with 40 seconds left on the clock. And a two-point runner lead. Here comes the heat. Deep downfield and out of the reach of the intended target. And again, the pressure getting to Calvillo and forcing him to throw it basically away. Yeah, and it was Ray Williams who 
ends up coming up the middle from the linebacking core. He's going to flush Calvillo out of there. He's got time initially. There comes the middle linebacker who's put together a tremendous great cut so far. Two more downs. Montreal's got to move the chains. 31 seconds left. Now the 13th man will try and take over. And they're at the 54 of the Rough Riders. Jamel Richardson coming across the middle. All kinds of coverage because the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had rushed just three and dropped nine. Remember, they used their timeout right before the three-minute warning. Clock running. Still at a field goal range. Anybody open? Incomplete. Bratton gets up and says, Challenge it. Of course, you can't challenge the last three minutes. Jake Ireland may take a look. Well, Brian Bratton is trying to talk Jake Ireland into it back at the command center. Let's take a look. Anthony Calvillo on the roll. And I thought that one took a little skip. Bratton got up and looked pretty convincing. The command center is requesting that we review the play. So Jake Ireland gets the call. Ten seconds on the clock. And Mark Tressman's team has to move it about ten more yards to get it into field goal range. Let's take one more look at a different angle on that catch. And did that touch the ground? It was ruled incomplete, which means they have to see evidence to overturn this. If he catches it, they are on the 40-yard line if they overturn the call. And if they do overturn it, they are in field goal range. Exactly. The best angle was from the end zone, and just as the ball gets to the receiver, a defender kind of blocks the view. So it's a tough call for Jake Ireland, and it's a critical one. If the ruling stands, Anthony Calvillo has 10 seconds and needs about 10 yards. I talked to Damon Duvall before the game about his range. He said comfortable 52. He would be obviously pushed to 55 or 60 if he had to. But he felt comfortable at 52. Now, he has not had a good game punting the ball. You wonder how much that weighs on him. The wind has buried here today. It would be at his back, it would appear. So Jake Ireland continues to deliberate. Remember, it has to be conclusive for him to overturn. Have we seen anything conclusive here? We're going to blow it up for you. And does this tell you? You can see the ball bounce, but you can't see if whether or not it bounces off of the hand of the receiver or off of the turf. They're going to jog it back again, and sometimes you can tell by the pellets on the turf, but again... After review, the ruling on the field stands. The pass was incomplete. And I think it stands because there wasn't enough evidence. It was just too difficult to be able to determine whether or not it was Bratton's hand underneath her arm or whether or not it was the ball skipping off the turf. So again, they've got time for one more play to get it into Duval range. Need at least five. Calvillo steps up, and they're going to get it. And there's time on the clock as Kerry Watkins, quiet all day, the all-Canadian receiver, puts it into range for Damon Duval. Mark Tressman talks about the leadership of Anthony Calvillo. How he's hardworking, humble, even keeled. 
He was composed on that throw. And now for the win. A guy who helped put him in a bind today with a couple of poor kicks gets to go from the doghouse to being a hero, and he's missed, but they're all going. at the Rough Rider bench. And if this is against the Rough Riders, it moves Damon Duvall closer, and I think it may be. Illegal substitution. Too many men on the field. Saskatchewan. Oh, my. It's a 10-yard penalty. They'll repeat first down. Paul LaPolice cannot believe it. And neither can, I'm sure, an entire province. Looks like somebody ran on late into the end zone. And now, Duval gets a second chance from 33 yards out to win the 97th Grey Cup. And the Montreal Alouettes have come all the way back. And they are the 2009 Grey Cup champions. Heartbreak for Saskatchewan. And a comeback win and redemption for the Alouettes. And it's really hard to absorb what we just saw when one team thought it had won the Grey Cup on the previous play, and Mark Tressman's team somehow has emerged victorious. Their motto was to win the day, and they needed every play in the game to finally nail this one down. Can only imagine how much emotion's on that field. Let's check in with Sarah Orleski. I have Anthony with me right now. Brian Chu just said it's been a long time coming. How sweet is this one? Oh man, I want to start by just giving all praise and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amazing but man hard work we didn't quit we came back and the guys fought and what a joyful event what a joyful event and Pete, you could not have scripted a more dramatic finish to that one what does it say about this group to be able to pull it out you know what first you guys were facing you know we didn't we didn't do anything in that first half we heard our defense with the turnovers but we came out and played well in that second half and took care of the job today so thank god how much, what is the feelings that go through right now when you, there was a lot of talk about the fact that this group was one in five in the big game since 2000. Is it a sense of relief? What is it for you right now? Uh, oh man, it's a huge relief. I mean, we always want another chance to come back and compete for a championship and win. And we finally pulled it off. So amazing, amazing. Enjoy this. Let's go to Farhan Lalji with Damon Duvall. Damon, after that first field goal missed and you got a second life with the penalty, how relieved were you? Oh, great. You know, going to the first one, I just sped up a little too much and pushed it right. And, you know, thank the man upstairs that we got a second chance and, you know, allowed me to just go out and do my job. And, you know, thanks for all these guys here, man. It's full of 60 minutes. You know, we started off a little rough and, you know, we're sitting here with green all around, but we stuck together halftime and said, you know, we're still in this. Let's just keep going and we're going to have a chance. And luckily I got the opportunity a second time, put it through and 
you know, give all these guys organization finally, you know, a ring and celebrate and have a good turn home. Last two punts of the first half for you weren't your best. Does it mean that much more that you were able to come back and, and do it this way and make up for it? Oh, definitely. I mean, if you notice, I went second half. I actually was wearing a glove in my right hand. That, that first, the, those two punts slipped out of my hand a little bit. And, you know, so it's great redemption bill come out because, you know, if we lose this game, I, I put that on me. Yes, that's a big part of it. And, uh, you know, be able to come out the second half and go and knock this thing through. You can't, I can't even explain the feeling right now. With what this team has been through, losing one of its previous six, does it make it that much more special when you just look at the emotion? These guys really feel that right now. Oh, definitely. You know, this year, this is for AC. Yeah. So all these guys right here that busted their butt. The last 10, 11 years, finally get them another ring and let them get out of here on a high note. And hopefully we'll get them back next year. We can make another charge for one more. But, you know, one's just going to soak it in right now and enjoy it. Congratulations, Damon. Let's send it back to Sarah, who's Thank with you. Brian Chu. Guys, here I am with Brian Chu. Jim Pop congratulating him right now. Brian, you just said to me, you guys needed this one. Explain. Couldn't handle going one and seven, or one and six, or whatever it was. We've had some uh, tough runs in the Great Cup, and I uh, uh, couldn't envision uh, losing another game like this. And uh, the character we have on this team is incredible. To be able to uh, fight through all that, believed in ourselves, never gave up, and uh, what a game. I was going to say, what does it say about this group facing that sort of adversity, something you guys haven't faced so far this season? you got to try to credit a Coach Tressman. Uh, the character of this team is all based on our head coach. He didn't let us ever... Uh, give up we believe in ourselves we trusted each other had each other's backs and uh wow how sweet is it to win this and with mark trustman as a coach i mean you guys got to the big game last year all this talk about what he has done for this franchise for you veteran players just re-energizing this whole group these coaches work countless hours uh you know they get us a thankless job we get all the credit for all their hard work the hours they put in here is just incredible and uh you know without them we would be nothing and uh, coach Tressman has uh came to this organization and shown us how to take it to another level thanks enjoy this let's send it back up to chris and glenn all right sarah thank you still trying to digest what we just yeah. saw in the last two plays where first it looked like the rough riders had won the great cup only to unbelievably have 13 men on the field. Well, let's count them. There they are. One, two, three, four, five. There's two here. Six and seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And one in the end zone. And one back in Jason Armstead in the end zone. That makes 13. So 12 on the line, too many men. A mental mistake that happens before the snap of the football. Pandemonium from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. They feel they thought they had it there, but 13 men on the field. One more chance for Damon Duval, but take nothing away from this win for the Montreal Alouettes. They were the best team in the Canadian Football League. Forget the beast from the East. They were the best in the league the entire season. What an effort by the Riders to get the lead heavy heavy underdogs have it come right down to a play like that but take nothing away from a resilient montreal team that just kept battling we thought saskatchewan's best chance was the 13th man as it turns out the 13th man cost them a great cup title mark tressman with his family a very private man showing the emotion that he feels of his first Grey Cup championship as a head coach. You know, you consider too, Chris, that the one question for Montreal, as confident of as a team they were, as focused, as well prepared as they've been all season, the one question you had is because of their failures in the Grey Cup championship coming in, if they got behind in this game, would they start to doubt themselves? Would they start to think, here we go again? It's going to happen to us again. And it comes right down to the wire where it looked like it was going to happen again. And they hung in there. Tremendous resilience after probably the worst half of football they played this year. Down 17-3 at the half. 
and now celebrating a 28-27 victory. A second chance for Damon Duval. And he made no mistake. The architect, Jim Pop, and the head coach, Mark Tressman. What a finish. A 33-yard field goal wins it for the Alouettes. Ladies and gentlemen, the 97th Grey Cup game is history, and it is time to honor two players 